Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm a software developer. I work at Global Freight Solutions uh, with a great team where we are using cutting edge technology to provide enterprise level carrier management uh, for retail and e-commerce across the UK and internationally. I know we're not alone in using Docker as part of our distributed microservices, but today I want to focus on the use of Docker as part of the developer's toolkit, specifically in simplifying integration testing. So we all know Docker as a best-in-class infra infrastructure solution for our applications and microservices. But Docker also allows us to easily spin up and destroy all of our de development and testing dependencies without worrying about trivial matters, uh, such as having to install several database servers on our machine or writing cleanup scripts for development databases to clear up any test residue. And also, a lot of our dependencies may not even run on Windows. So, especially in the ever-growing world of distributed microservices, it is becoming more and more common for each individual service of an application to have its own database and to require a lot more external dependencies. So today we're going to talk about how using Docker and Docker Compose, we can easily simplify not just mocking, but actually running these dependencies from a consistent known initial state. Uh, we can use them in our tests, and then we can dispose of them when we're done, leaving us with full integration tests that can test every part of our service without any annoying artifacts that need cleaning up. Uh, as mentioned, I am Andrew Crumpler of Global Freight Solutions, and please hit me up on Twitter at crumpler underscore Andrew. What we're going to cover today is what integration testing is and why we should care about that and how we can use Docker to run our tests, how we can containerize our dependencies, and how we can use Docker Compose to put those together. And we're also going to look at running that as part of an automated build pipeline. So integration tests, for me, are the tests where we want to make sure that we can access the database or perform an operation and verify that we did what we expected. Where we can, they're the tests we want to ensure that our methods of communication with our dependencies and our handling of those are correct. Uh, however, integration testing generally tends to be that sort of test where we leave it, saying that we'll get to it if we have time, and that's often because it's the most difficult and time-consuming to do. But it's, to me, at least as equally as important as any other test, and we really should be doing these. So we often assume that our database is going to behave how we think it is, or that our async messaging system is going to do exactly what we want it to do. But often therein are the bugs that are the most annoying and intricate to isolate and fix. And how we interact with our dependencies will determine how much value we get out of them. And really, if we don't test that, then how can we be sure that we are interacting with them correctly? So our first demonstration is going to be using Docker to run our tests. So we're going to need Docker Desktop, Node, and NPM. And all of the code is available on GitHub at the link on your screen right now if you want to follow along with us. OK, so here we have a very simple function that just accepts an animal and then checks that animal against a list of dog breeds to determine whether that animal is a breed of dog based upon the list that we have here. So we have some simple tests to match that simple code. And we're using the Mocha and Chai framework to test here. And given a poodle, it should return true because the poodle is a type of dog. And given a hedgehog, it should return false because that's not a, a breed of dog. So we can run these tests very simply here by running npm install to get all our dependencies. And if we just run npm test, we should run our test for us. And we can see that both of those pass, so we're all good. So we now want to run those in a container here. So we've got this simple Docker file for that. And we're starting from a base image using the node base image. And we're just going to copy everything over, move into that directory, run the npm install command, and then npm test when we start the container. So we can build this image by running docker build. If we then tag it, let's call it docker.com1. And we're just going to pass the dot parameter here to say that this is the context in which we want to build this image.
Okay, so we can see that it got through each of the steps we want here. So we started from Node, copied over, changed our working directory, ran the npm install, which got some, we can ignore these uh, these warnings from npm here. And we've set our command to npm test. So if we set this up now, we can run this. And we can run, uh, what do we call it, dockercon1. Okay, and we can see that that has run both of our tests and both of them passed. And we've run that inside our container. So now we can run that DockerCon again and again. And we'll know that we're always going to be running the same tests exactly as they were at that time. So I just want to talk briefly about why we're running our tests in the container. So firstly, it means that we're running our tests in a sanitized, clean environment. And I cannot stress the importance of this enough. There's nothing more annoying than your tests running perfectly fine on your machine, but as soon as you give it to someone else or put it in your automated build pipeline, suddenly they don't work anymore. But by running it in a clean, sanitized, consistent environment every time, such as in a container, you know that it's always going to work no matter the environment. It also makes it a lot easier to hook up our containerized dependencies if our tests are also containerized. And for me, it's just common sense that if our service is going to run in a container, then we should test it in a container. So I'm going to show you how to set up and run two common dependencies in a container. So I'm going to use Docker to start a container that is running a MongoDB instance. And then we're going to set up a container running Google Cloud PubSub emulator. I've, sh I've chosen those two because they show two different ways in which to do this and because they are two technologies that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. But these concepts can be applied to any external dependency you might be using in your application. For example, a SQL database or a Redis cache. So the first dependency we're going to containerize is a Mongo database. We're going to pull the image, we're going to run the container, and we're also going to take a look at using an initialization script to see the database with some consistent known data that we can use in our tests. Okay, so to run Mongo in a container, first we need to go and get that public image. So to do that, we can run docker pull Mongo. And I'll just specify the latest tag. So that's going to go up to the public repository and get the image for Mongo and save it onto my machine. Okay, so we can see that we've now got that image. In fact, it was actually already up to date on my machine. So we can now run that. If I run docker run, and let's pass in some arguments here. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call it Mongo1. And we're going to pass this P tag here to say we want to publish all of the ports. And we're going to specify we're going to run, run Mongo latest. Okay, so we can see that this is now running. And if we go over here and we run docker ps, we can see that we have got a running instance of Mongo that we've named Mongo1. And we can see here that we're publishing the port 27017 from the container to our local host 32768. So we can actually connect to Mongo now. We're using the Mongo shell. And if we pass in the host of localhost and the port, of 32768, the shell will actually connect to that Mongo instance and we can do anything you want to do such as And then so 
So we can see that we've got a fully functioning instance of MongoDB running in a container. So I'm going to exit out of these. And we're going to have a look at starting up one of these using a initialization script. So first, let's take a quick look at the initialization script. So it's quite short and quite simple. All we're doing is we're going to create a collection we're going to call greetings. And inside that collection, we're going to insert hello world and hello docker. So we've already got the image, so we don't need to pull another one because that already exists. So we can call docker run. And we're going to give it another name. We're going to call this one Mongo2. And we're going to publish those ports again. And this time we're going to map the volumes over. So to do that, we want the full path of this. So I'm just going to copy that full path here and paste that in. And we're going to map that to the special directory within the container itself within the specified within the image and it's going to be docker uh, dash entry point dash init db dot d and we're just going to map that file directly to an init dash mongo dot js file and this can just be read only so now we need to specify the image we're going to run which is mongo latest and we'll run that. So that's going to map the volume of this specific file on my machine to that specific volume, that specific uh, directory within the container, which it will use to seed the database using this data only if it doesn't find any existing databases. So as we're running a new container, it shouldn't find anything. So give that a second run. And there we go. So that should be running now. So if we go back over here and if we run Docker PS again, we can see we've got Mongo2 running. And that's our top one. And that's 32769 it's been uh, mapped to this time. So if we now call our Mongo again, and we're going to go to localhost 32769, we can connect to that. And if we go db. Uh, dot greetings dot find we can see our seeded data hello world and hello docker is already in there on the collection that it created for us so the second dependency is a google cloud pub sub emulator and for this one, we're going to actually create the Docker file and build and run it ourselves. And we're going to see this one in action as part of our Docker Compose demonstration. OK, so to run the Google Cloud PubSub emulator in a container, all we're going to need is this Docker file. So we're going to start with the base image of the Google Cloud SDK image. Uh, we're going to expose port 8085. Then we need to run the uh, this update and install for the Java runtime environment, which is a prerequisite and a dependency of the cloud PubSub emulator. Then we can start using the gcloud command line utility built into the cloud SDK base image to install beta components and then to also quietly install the PubSub emulator. So this quiet, emi uh, this quiet tag here will allow us to skip the interactive parts of the installation process, as we won't be able to do that whilst this image is being, in, is being uh, built. So we can then also specify the entry point of uh, the GCal beta emulators pub sub. And we're going to start. And we're going to specify that the host port is that port that we exposed, 8085, here. So we can build this using the docker build command. And we're going to tag it as pub sub emulator okay so that's now built our image so we can see that it took our base image it exposed the port we want it installed the Java runtime environment installed beta components installed the Google Cloud PubSub emulator 
and set our entry point and our command. So if we run this now using the docker run command, we can run pubsub emulator. Okay, and we can see that that's starting. And we can see that that started, and it's listening on port 8085 that we asked it to. And it's telling us that it is indeed a PubSub fake. Cool, so we're going to see that in action when we run our, uh, when we run our integration tests using Docker Compose in the next demonstration. Okay, so... Now we're going to use Docker Compose, which is going to take all three of those and we're going to put it together and make it run. We're going to create a Docker Compose YAML file for this and it's going to run our Mongo database, our Google PubSub emulator, and it's going to also build and run our tests using those containerized dependencies and the C data we put in our Mongo database. So we've changed our code now. So our is a breed of dog function now uses a Mongo client to get a uh, get an array of dogs which we're going to test our provided animal against. And we're also going to source that provided animal from a PubSub subscription. So we're going to get our subscription and topic here and assign this message handler to the message event. Which will get the animal, call our function, and then publish that to the dog's topic if it is indeed a breed of dog. Okay, so now as we can see, our tests have changed to match our code. So to test the is a breed of dog function, again, we're going to pass a poodle. And we, all we have to do is just pass that animal directly to the function and just allow the code to execute exactly as it would out in the wild. And this one, of course, should be true because a poodle is a breed of dog. And again here, uh, we're going to just call a function with our given animal. And this one should be false because a penguin is not. Now the test for our subscribe function is a little bit more complex. So for this one, we're going to need, going to, need to actually set up some of the uh, some of the pub sub topics and subscriptions. So we're going to need to create a an animals topic, which we'll source our animals from, a dogs topic, which we will publish to, and then a subscription to the animals topic, which we will use within our code to subscribe to. And we're just going to create a subscription to our dogs topic so that we can consume it here in our tests and test what the actual output is of, our, of that topic and of our code. So in this test, we're going to, of course, arrange our animal, a poodle. And we're going to just create a promise here using this once function, which takes an event emitter and an event as a string. And this will provide us a promise which will, uh, which will resolve with any given resolution arguments when that first uh, event occurs and is emitted by that event emitter. So now we can just publish directly using that animal's topic, this animal, and then await that promise for the message on the dog's topic to come to us. Then we can extract the dog out of that and just test to see that actually that is exactly the animal that we provided. So in order to ensure that these tests are going to pass, we're going to need to make sure that we've got some initialization data, some seed data in our database. So we've got a, another init Mongo uh, script here. So again, we're going to, this one, we're going to create a user. We're going to create a collection. We're going to even create an index using this one. And we're going to insert a poodle and a Labrador. Just two. We can imagine that there might be some more breeds of dogs in this uh, in this database. Okay, so now we're going to look at our Docker file. So we're going to build our tests much the same as we did previously. So so we're going to start from the node base image, copy it over, run the npm install. Uh, but then we have this uh, something slightly different. So we're going to add an executable, which we're going to download from GitHub here, and uh, credit to UFO Scout for this. Uh, this will provide us with a, a little function uh, that's called wait. And this wait executable we can run before we run our tests. And this is going to allow us to wait for the Mongo database and the PubSub emulator to be available to our tests before we start running our tests. 
and this just checks a host and port over TCP and will just report back to us and complete the action uh, when both are available so that we can start running our tests. Okay, and if we have a quick look, we can see we've got our pub sub docker file, which we've which is just exactly the same as we had in our previous example, which we'll, we will use to build our pub sub emulator. Of course, you could just use a public image th this time around. Okay, so now we're going to look at our docker compose yaml file. So first thing we need to do is specify what well, our version of the API we're going to use and we're going to then specify what our services are. So we're going to specify that we want a Mongo service and we're going to use the public base image of Mongo for that and we're going to specify we don't want any logging out of this so that it doesn't muddy up our console and we can see the results of our tests easier. We're going to pass in some environment variables so we're going to pass in a database root username and root password that are all going to be created for us and then we're also going to pass in this volume. And this volume is our initialization script that's going to seed the database with all the data that we need. So then we can build our pub sub image and that pub sub container is going to be built using the pub sub docker file. And again, we don't want any logging so that we can see our tests easier. Now we can build our integration test container and that's going to use the docker file that we've already looked at and we're going to pass in some environment variables that our code needs, which is the Mongo connection string, the database, collection, docs topic, subscription. So we also need to pass in this PubSub emulator host environment variable, and that's going to tell the client that it's going to use this host and port to talk to PubSub rather than the public cloud service. So this is where Docker Compose becomes really, really helpful for us. So here we can see that in the Mongo connection string, we're passing in Mongo, and in the PubSub emulator host, we're passing in PubSub. And that directly refers to the names we gave to our services and allows us to refer to them via D DNS within our network created for us by Docker Compose. So we're also going to pass in a PubSub project ID, and this wait host here will tell the wait executable that we downloaded and ran as part of our Docker build to wait before running our uh, run, before running our tests. It will only complete and run our tests when these hosts and ports are available. And we can also specify that this container is dependent on the Mongo and PubSub containers and services that we've specified above. So we can run these tests quite simply if we just run docker-compose up and we're also going to pass in this build flag to say that we want to build any that we need to build and we're also going to pass in abort on container exit to say you can finish when one of our containers is done which will likely be our tests so if we run that it's going to find our docker compose file it's going to build the PubSub container and service for us. And now that's done, it's going to build our integration tests. Of course, it doesn't need to build Mongo because that already exists. It just needs to pull and run it. So you can see we're adding that wait executable. We're starting them all. You can see that we're not getting any logs from those two. And it's waiting for, for those hosts to be available. And our tests have run and passed. So we can see here that this is the, the wait executable checking to make sure that those hosts are available. And it can say that it's not yet, and then it says that it is. And we can see that our tests ran and all passed. Okay, so finally, I just want to quickly show how we can easily run this as part of our automated build pipelines. I'm going to be using Azure DevOps for this, but the concepts apply across all available options. And then, of course, there are other options available. 
So we're going to run our tests as part of the build pipeline. We're going to report the exit status of the test container so that our build can fail if our tests fail. And we're also going to extract the test report using a mapped volume. Okay, so now we're going to take a quick look at running this these tests as part of an automated build pipeline. So we've had to make just a few small changes. So first of all, we're just going to have a look. We've, we've set up another test script, a CI test script, which is much the same, but is going to report using the JUnit reporter, the test results. Uh, we've also had to change our Docker file to run that rather than the tests command. And just a slight change to our Docker Compose where we added this volumes to our integration service. And that's just going to map the results directory that we're publishing our results to via the, 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 the test command into the local results directory. Okay, so to run this, all we need is an Azure Pipelines YAML file. So this file is just going to use an Ubuntu latest VM image. And we're just going to run the Docker Compose command. And it's going to find the Docker Compose file exactly where we put it. And we're going to provide the command as we did previously. We're going to provide up and exit code from an integration. So we're going to say that we want the exit code from our integration service within our Docker Compose YAML file. And that means that the exit code provided by the Docker Compose command is going to be that of our tests, meaning that the build will fail if our tests fail and the build will pass if our tests pass. And then we can just publish our test results file and we know that it's just going to be called testresults.xml and we know that's going to be available because we are publishing it via the volume. Okay, so now we can actually run this pipeline. And we can also look at the logs while this is happening. And uh, this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to fast forward through this. And there we go. So that's run all our tests. It's going to stop the containers. And we've published the test report. So if we go back here, we can have a look at tests. And we can see that we run all three of our tests and all three passed. So our build has successfully completed. So we've seen how we can run our tests in a container. We've seen how we can run our dependencies in containers, both a MongoDB and a Google PubSub emulator. But we know that we can run any of our dependencies in containers, such as a SQL database or a Redis cache. And we've also seen how we can use Docker Compose to put those together and make use of them when we run our tests. And I really just want to emphasize just how useful Docker is as part of the developer's toolkit. We can test, we can containerize our testing dependencies and our development dependencies. And Docker and Compose really does do all of the hard work for us. And again, I want to stress for how we interact with our dependencies determines how much value we get out of them. So we should definitely be testing that. So thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I've had a great time and I really hope you have too. So uh, I'll be available in the chat for, some, uh, for answering any questions that you might have. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.